before we start our first lesson in General Biology 1, let us first define what is biology. So biology means the study of life, and it comes from the two Greek words, bios means life, and logos means word, or reason, or study science. So biology is the science that deals with structures, functions, and relationships of living things and their environment. So biology is such a broad field and may be studied at various levels such as molecular, cellular, organismal, population, community, or either ecosystems. So what are the three divisions of the biological sciences? First is zoology, which is the study of animals. Second, which is botany, which is the study of plants. Third is microbiology, which is the study of microorganisms. So these major divisions may be further subdivided into specialized fields or branches that often correlate or overlap with one another. So some of these branches include taxonomy, which is the study of naming and classifying of organisms. Next is cytology, which is the study of structures and functions of cell. Next is ecology, the study of relationships of organisms with environment. Physiology, which is the study of functions of organisms and their parts. Embryology, the study of development of organisms. Next is morphology, which is the study of forms and structures of an organisms. Next is evolution, which is the study of origin and differentiations of various organisms. Biochemistry, which is the study of chemistry and chemical compositions of living things. So new sub-disciplines in biology have also emerged because of rapidly changing technology. So some of these includes the molecular biology, which is the study of structure, composition, and interactions of molecules that make up an organism. Next is genomics, which is the study of the intergenetic material of organisms. Next is proteomics, which is the study of the different proteins found in an organism. Next is immunology which is the study of the immune system. And lastly, the bioinformatics, which is the study of application and use of computers to process and analyze biological data. So modern biology is very integrative in the sense that a biological question may be studied from different fields as reverse as biochemistry and behavior and from different vantage points ranging from molecules to whole organisms and even ecosystems. So why study biology? Yes, it's true. So biology is the study of our body and its environment. It is the science of our lives, yes. And the studying biology will help in understanding the functions and reactions of our body. Biology also involves studying and examining other animals. It also helps in understanding how these animals survive, respond, and interact in their environment. Other life forms are important because biology uses some of them, such as mice, yes, frogs, and monkeys as specimens to further understand our body. So biology takes into realm the study of plants. Plants are significant as they provide us with oxygen, food, medicine, clothing, and etc. Building materials come from them. Thus, biology takes it upon itself to also study how the quality and the quantity of these plants can be improved. Above all, 
Biology is important because it is a science that will make you think critically, make informed choices, solve problems, and know the boundaries of science. So biology as science. Science is an objective, it should be logical, and repeatable attempt to understand the principles and forces operating in the natural universe. In biological point of view, science is of course a body of systematized information about living things derived from observations and experimentation. So, what is scientific method? So, of course, it is a guide and it is used by different scientists to be to make their study more scientific and more relevant in solving their problems or shall we say reliable so what are the steps of scientific method first of course you need to do the observation so you need to identify and clearly define the problem what are the certain phenomenon that is happening on a certain place or in a natural setting. So that would be your first thing to or a guide that you need to remember. Next is, of course, you need to hypothesize. You need to make your educated guess. So you need to do hypothesis. Formulating a working explanation or an intelligent guess about the problem. Next, you need to, from your hypothesis, you need to do the experimentation or conducting controlled attempts to test one or more hypotheses includes recording and analyzing results. Next is conclusion, formulation or creating generalization about the result which may accept or reject or modify the hypothesis. So an excellent experiment should be based on an, an excellent experimental design. An extensive related literature search is very important in the process of defining the problem and designing the experiment. Am I right? So asking questions and being curious about anything is the beginning of a scientific method. Biologists want to know the whys and hows of their observations. The discovery of the smallpox vaccine by the English physician with, called, uh, named Edward Jenner in 1976 started this way. So, of course, from his observation, he said that farmers who were previously infected with cowpox disease rarely contracted the deadly smallpox disease. So Dr. Jenner identified the problem how to control the deadly disease smallpox. He formulated an intelligent guess that could explain the problem. So this is his, his hypothesis. So cowpox exposure could render protection to persons against catching smallpox. So Dr. Jenner was aware that both diseases were caused by biological agents which now we call or now we call viruses which are found in the skin source of patients. So what he did is that he extracted some pus from a cowpox sore of a patient and inoculated it on the arm of a healthy boy. So this result in the development of cowpox sore after several days and after six weeks, he injected the boy with some pus from a small pox sore and the boy that, I mean, And the boy did not develop smallpox disease. 
The experimentation was repeated several times using different patients and the same results were noted. So in his conclusion, transfer of pus from a cowpox sore renders immunity against smallpox infection. So at this time, we will be learning what is all about the cell theory. So cells are the basic building, building blocks of all living things. So the human body is composed of trillions of cells. They provide structure from the body, take in nutrition from food, convert those nutrients into energy, and carrying out specialized functions. Cells also contain the body's heredity and can make copies of themselves. Cells have many parts such as organelles and specialized structures that perform certain tasks within the cell. So in this lesson, you are going to explain the postulates of the cell theory, which is the three postulates of the cell theory offer the basis on how organism is considered as a living thing. So in our first lesson, which is the cell theory, it is said that cells are the basic building blocks of all living things. The human body is composed of trillions of cells. They provide structures for the body, take in nutrients from food, convert those nutrients into energy, and carry out specialized functions. Cells also contain the body's heredity material and can make copies of themselves. Cells have many parts, each with a different functions. So some of these parts called organelles, which are specialized structures that perform certain tasks within the cell. So of course, in this lesson, you are going to explain the postulate of the cell theory. And the three postulate of the cell theory offer the basis on how an organism is considered as a living thing. So the cell theory, which is um, studied by Robert Hooke, and he was able to observe in a piece of cork specimen structures which appear as a tiny compartments similar to small rooms that are fitted to each other. So Hooke coined the word cell, which is to describe this as a chamber-like structure. Yes, this, and later become famous. Until 1676, Anton van Leeuwenhoek published his observation on tiny living organisms, which he named animalcules. It was believed that Leeuwenhoek was the first to observe under his microscope the structure of a red blood cell of different animals as well as sperm cell. One of the leading rather botanists in his time is Robert Brown in 1831, which was able to compare the diverse kinds of plant specimen under the microscope. So he markedly indicated that there is one common thing about them, and they are all composed of cells, and inside the cell is a dark, dense spot which he termed as nucleus. So the cell theory is universal for all living things, no matter how simple or complex, tiny or huge it is. This theory can be summed up into three basic components, which is all living things or all living organisms are composed of one or more cells because cells divides every time. 
So the cell is the basic unit of life in all living things. And lastly, it is said that all cells come from pre-existing cells. So an organism can be unicellular or shall we say a one-celled or either multicellular. So a single-celled organism can perform all the essential functions which enable it to grow, survive, and reproduce. When we say multicellular organism are more complex in structure and function, but the mechanism on how it is able to live is still the same with the simple life forms. So structures can only be observed under high magnification electron microscope and are separated internally into numerous membranous compartments called organelles. These organelles perform a variety of functions like productions of proteins, storage of important materials, harvesting energy, repairing cell parts, digestion of substance, and maintaining the shape and structure of the cell, among the others. And this area will be discussed in the next lesson. So, the cell theory and of course a summary of the story. So the discoveries of Schleiden, Schwann, and Virchow are summarized into guiding principles now called the cell theory, which of course the cell theory states that an all organisms are composed of one or more cells. The cell is the basic unit of structure in function of all organisms. All cells arise from pre-existing cells, and the three statements that comprise the cell theory tells us that cell is the basic structural function and reproductive unit of all organisms. It is also provides us with an operational definition of life. So this end our first lesson, which is the cell theory. I hope that you learned something about our lesson.